Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today our job is to terraform Mercury. This is Mercury orbiting around the Sun. The Sun is somewhere over here. And our job today is to try to turn this somewhat dry and hot planet into something that looks more like Earth. Let's look at Earth. It's right there. And we're trying to make it look like this. Oh, this is spinning really, really fast. Let's slow it down. There we go. This is what we're looking for. Alright, so this is Universe Sandbox 2, and let's see, let's uh, look at some of the uh, physical theories and also some of the ideas that we can use to try to turn Mercury into Earth. And before we start, let's just take a look at some of the things, some of the characteristics of Mercury. So first of all, it's a relatively small planet. It's only about four and a half times the uh, mass of the moon, so it's actually not that big. And one of the problems with that is that it, can, it doesn't have enough gravity to actually hold an atmosphere. So um, that's actually one of the problems we're facing, so getting atmosphere in there might be pretty difficult. The other thing that we're facing is that it is actually really, really close to the sun. It's actually really close to the sun, and because of that, its temperature is currently 124 degrees Celsius. That is pretty hot. And the third problem is that it actually doesn't spin fast enough, um, so it's almost... Um, this is actually called tidal, tidal lock. It's almost tidally locked with the sun, meaning that one of its sides is usually a little bit colder, actually a lot colder than the other side. Now, this is something that we might not be able to resolve, but everything else we can try to resolve, starting with the temperature. Now, how do we decrease the temperature? So, we can obviously just decrease this number, but that's kind of cheating. We're not going to do it this way. We're actually going to do, we're going to think about this theoretically. So, theoretically, theoretically, one of these words I'm going to learn how to pronounce this. Um, theoretically, how can we actually decrease the temperature and why is the temperature so high? Well, it's so high because there is so much sunlight getting onto the surface of the planet. In other words, it's absorbing a lot of the sunlight. Now, the absorption in uh, Earth sciences is usually measured with something called albedo. Albedo is right here. Albedo is Latin for whiteness. In other words, how much uh, sunlight is reflected from the surface. Now, if you look at Earth, where's Earth? The average albedo on Earth is actually 0.33. In other words, it's 33% reflectivity. The other, uh, but the one thing is that here, right here, where it's white, where it's clouds, where it's snow, the albedo is actually much, much higher. Uh, snow sometimes has albedo up to 90%, so uh, it can reflect up to 90% of sunlight. On the other hand, Mercury, if you go back to Mercury, Mercury has albedo of only 12%. In other words, it's really, really dark. It's too dark, so that's why it's absorbing so much sunlight. So we need to increase albedo somehow, and this is actually theoretically possible. If we were to like launch some sort of our big rocket onto the planet and explode some sort of material that makes the reflectivity of the entire planet a lot higher, we can actually possibly decrease its temperature. So let's just imagine that we launch this huge, huge rocket with some sort of a super material that in essentially turns the entire surface white. So we're going to increase albedo to, let's just say, let's start with something like 50%. So 50% reflectivity is actually theoretically possible. So we're going to go for 50%. It's it's somewhere between um, the color of dirty snow and the color of uh, new snow. So let's increase time and look at the temperature right here. And you can see the temperatures have already started to decrease. So it's already down to 115 degrees Celsius. And we're going to try to take it down to maybe about 50 at least, because I don't think uh, anywhere higher than 50 is going to be habitable for, for our race. Humans don't really like when it's too hot. We don't like when it's too cold. So we're going to try to get it to as low as possible. All right, so that wasn't actually enough. So let's just go a little bit lower. So let's just decrease it to just say 92%, so actually 90%, let's start with 90% because that's actually uh, the reflectivity of brand new sparkly snow. So imagine that the entire temperature, uh, sorry, the entire surface of uh, Mercury suddenly looks like snow. And look at that, temperature decreased dramatically. We're now at about 24 degrees, 23, 22. So this is perfect. This is actually very, very uh, habitable, tolerable, so I think we can actually live on this planet. So that solves the temperature problem. Now we actually can, and um, we can actually try to migrate here and possibly even introduce. Um, oh no, it's going too low. So let's actually let's let's play around with reflectivity a little bit more and make it a little bit more stable. So I'm going to increase, oh, sorry, decrease this to approximately 80% or 79. Let's just 
it's making 79 and see how it goes. Okay, and at 79%, it's about 6 to 7 degrees Celsius. That's not too bad, it's not too cold, uh, not too warm. Now, we don't still have any atmosphere and we don't actually have any water on it, and that's our next solution, or next problem. Now, the atmosphere, unfortunately, will not stay on this planet because it's so, so tiny. Uh, because of the mass, most of the atmosphere will actually escape, so it won't actually stay on Mercury. Um, unless we can actually collapse it with a bigger, much bigger body and increase its mass. Now that sounds a little bit too challenging. I don't think we can actually uh, send a, an object large enough to collide with this planet. And even though in the, in the game we could, in real life it would be almost impossible. So instead, let's just see what happens if we add a little bit of carbon dioxide here. So we've added a little bit of carbon dioxide and it's actually going to be as gas. So let's just have a little bit of atmosphere. This is atmospheric mass right here. Um, and uh, uh, carbon dioxide is actually heavy enough that it might it might actually stay on the surface of um, of Mercury. Oxygen, however, might escape. Uh, so let's keep playing around with this and let's uh, add a little bit more organics. And now here comes the big one. So we need some water. So water might be actually quite difficult to get to Mercury. So uh, what we might be able to do is somehow uh, harvest water from within the planet if it's um, if there is enough material for us to construct water. So for water we need oxygen and hydrogen. Now we might or might not have it inside. We don't actually know what exactly what mercury contains, but let's just assume that there is something to create water, and we are able to construct these machines on the planet that start producing lots and lots of water and eventually we get water on the surface. And here we have our first little lakes that were formed on the planet. We now have atmosphere, but that's mostly because we kind of cheated and we added uh, a little bit of uh, carbon dioxide atmosphere, possibly by um, constructing more machines on the surface and possibly just kind of creating carbon dioxide from whatever is available on the planet. Now let's add a, uh, a little bit more water. Ooh, and look at that. It is now absolutely covered in water. This is just a big blue bowl of water. I think this is actually too much water. I'm going to go back and decrease the surface a little bit, just so there's at least some islands. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Let's just find the right balance right here between continents and water. And look at that. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is our terraformed mercury. So essentially, this is what it might look like if we are ever able to terraform it. Now, unfortunately, because of the mass, because the mass is so, so tiny, the atmosphere will eventually escape. And uh, because there will be no atmosphere, no atmospheric pressure, there's a very big chance that all of the water will basically evaporate and it will look like it, it was before. So um, we don't actually have any surface pressure here, right here, but we should probably have some. I'll just say there's going to be point. 0.4 or something, 0.4 surface pressure, and but eventually, unfortunately, it will most likely all evaporate, all escape, and look barren again. Now, how do we resolve this barrenness? Well, one way is, like I said before, if we collide this with something big enough so that the mass actually increases. If we can make this mass somewhere between mass of Venus and mass of Mercury, uh, mass of Mars, we can actually possibly. Um, get this to be an actual functional um, planet where we can actually live. So let's look at Mars for a second. Now this is Mars, this is our next target for the next video where we're going to terraform it. But before we do that, we'll just look at, at its mass. So 8.73 moon mass, meaning that it's 8.73 times the mass of moon. And unfortunately, we know that the atmosphere on Mars is actually very, very thin because most of its atmosphere escaped as well. So we need to have a mass just a little bit more than that. And now let's look at Venus. Venus, on the other hand, has a um, mass of 66 times the moon, meaning that it's 60 time, 66 times as heavy as the moon, or as massive as the moon. So, in other words, if we can have something between 66 and 8, we can probably create a planet that can support atmosphere. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to take uh, a, a huge, huge chunk of a planet, or basically just an ob object that is very massive, and then collide it with Mercury until its mass increases. To do this, we're going to use one of the powers here. This is, this is a body factory. And here we can actually choose what we're going to collide with it. So just for fun, let's just uh, start with colliding a moon and increase the mass by uh, just a little bit. So here's our moon and we're going to smack it right into Mercury. 
All right, so that's one moon. Let's do another one. Two moons. Three moons. Four moons. Five moons. So you can see that there's lots of awesome effects here. Planet is boiling hot now. There's no way you can support life. But it will eventually cool down. So let's just go to... So uh, now the measurement is actually in um, uh, Earth masses. So let's just go to about 0.5 Earth. I'm going to increase this so that it's more than Mars, but just under Venus and Earth. So essentially we have to collide something like 20 different moons, moon-like objects to make this massive enough to support atmosphere. And even though it's, pra it's not very practical, one day maybe we'll be able to do that somehow. So let's just get to 0.5 Earth. Uh, this is, I think this is about 30 moons right now. Okay, so we're at 0.5 Earth and uh, same distance from the sun. And basically we're gonna wait for this to cool down and uh, wait for it to become, it's, it's still a terrestrial planet so it will still have water, it will still have everything. But now we'll be actually able to have a, a, a very stable atmosphere. So I'll just accelerate this until it cools down. You can see the temperature is going down dramatically. And eventually it will actually be low enough for us to, to live on it. After about a year it actually started looking more like the moon itself. But that's because it's still very hot. It's actually still 420 uh, 20 degrees. And you can see these craters from all the moons that collided into it. But let's just see and wait, I'll wait and see until it actually gets water and atmosphere. After about a year more, you can see there's actually atmosphere already, so there's a uh, cloud circulating around the planet, but still too hot to support water, so let's wait a little bit, maybe one more year, and we'll be able to have water in it. Now, I may actually have to change albedo even more, because the size of the planet increased, so that means that it's actually able to absorb a lot more sunlight as well, so I'm going to increase my albedo to about 90, 90, 93%, uh, make it even more reflective, and wait for the temperature to go down again. Oh no, I just accidentally smacked another planet into it. Oops. Okay, so we are actually at uh, 76 degrees now, so we could technically put some more water here. And I think there's no water on the surface just because I don't actually have enough of it. So let's just add a little bit more water and see what it looks like after we make this a blue planet. And here we go, at 85% albedo, after about 14 years, I was able to stabilize the temperature at approximately 10 degrees Celsius average. And you have all this beautiful water, you have clouds, you have atmosphere, and somewhat grayish land. Now, I think there's actually even ice caps here somewhere. Um, and this is basically our new Mercury. It does spin much a lot faster as well, because we smacked so many planets into it that it, it acquired a lot of momentum. Uh, from those collisions and now it actually has a much faster day but unfortunately its day is actually if you look at the, its rotation it's sort of in a direction um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here in a direction toward its own orbit and basically only one side is spinning the other side is always in the dark so I think there's actually ice caps here I can't really even see it uh, we can obviously um, try to light this side but I'm not going to do it right now, but basically, yes, yeah, so this side is always exposed to the sun. This is the warm side, and then there's a cold side right here. But this is basically it. This is basically it. This is a completely terraformed Mercury, much heavier than before, with atmosphere, uh, water, and everything else. All right, so let, next time we're going to try to do the same with Mars and Venus. But for now, let's just stop here. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Good luck to you, and bye-bye.